I do want to see about adding a few more over here. So you can email me at theblackauthority at yahoo.com and just put on their moderator. Um, make sure somebody, certainly you get pluses if you're somebody I recognize in that regard. But I definitely want to add a, two or three more moderators over here. So if you've been waiting for your opportunity to do that, I'm going to go ahead and start opening that up here again. So you can go ahead and do that tonight if you want to. Just email me at theblackauthority at yahoo.com with the subject line moderator. And I definitely want to see about getting beefing up some more mods here. What I want to do is I want to go tonight here and I want to start with something a little bit different here. I saw this post. I saw this post on YouTube from former Labor Secretary Robert Reich. He was Labor Secretary during the Clinton administration. And during that time, those of us who remember him, he was a pretty smart dude, pretty spry. He's pretty much stayed active in that regard. And with that being the case, he put up this post here a couple days ago. Remember, most billionaires are not self-made. They're made in a, via a combination of inherited wealth, government subsidies, tax loopholes, labor exploitation, and policy failures. Can we stop perpetuating a myth that blames wealth inequality on the choices of everyday Americans? He then puts down the five ways that a person accumulates a billion dollars. He says there's basically five ways to accumulate a billion dollars. Number one, profiting from a monopoly. Number two, insider trading. Number three, political payoffs. Number four, fraud. Number five, inheritance. Don't believe the self-made myth. Now, I find that to be very interesting. I find that to be extremely interesting because as you all understand, we here in Intelligent Black Society have said this now for well over a century. But you see, when we point it out, we point out that, by the way, try getting rich in America if you're not white. What? Try getting rich in America if you're not white. It is not a level playing field. It's rigged. It is a rigged game. It is a rigged affirmative action game. Specifically for white people. All these things that he just named, here's the problem. You can't be black and do any of the things that he just listed. That's the problem. You cannot be black and profit from a monopoly. You cannot be black and commit insider trading. You cannot be black and perform political payoffs. Ain't that right, Kwame Kilpatrick, Ray Nagin, and all the others. You cannot be black and commit fraud. You cannot be black and have it from inheritance. Ain't that right, Michael Jackson kids and all the rest of them? You can't be black and have access to any of those mechanisms. And that's why we've always said that when you got individuals talking about they pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and they were just smart and they were just intelligent and they just worked hard and we said, get out of our faces with that garbage. There's no such thing. It's a myth that you created. There's no such animal. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Because we can't do any of those things. I'm going to give you a case in point. I'm going to give you a case in point. None other than Elon Musk, and, by the way. And I found this to be very interesting here because you see how people try to lionize him. Look it up. They try to hold him up as something of being a symbol of worship. Got whole Twitter pages around this white supremacist entrepreneur. Although he's not much of an entrepreneur now, is he? Not much of an entrepreneur now, is he? 
On this page here, it said, young, ambitious Elon Musk talking about what it takes to take on the legacy automakers when Tesla was just a couple of billion dollars worth in value at that time. And what I'm saying is this whole thing right here is fraudulent. This whole thing is fraudulent. I want you to hear what he had to say here. It's strange to compete with uh, car companies that have large resources when it comes to developing new automobiles. If you say, say GM or, or Ford, they have thousands and thousands of engineers mm -hmm. who can work on fuel efficiency and other means to... So where's their electric car? Well, that's my question. Where is their electric car? Um, big companies are not very good at um, revolutionary innovation. Um, they, they're okay when it comes to incremental, you know, things here and there, but they have a real problem with, uh, you know, taking the next leap forward. But somebody needs to lead the way, a smaller company needs to lead the way. And why is it, do you think, that these large companies who, on a first look, have much more resources and, and, and experience in a certain market? market? Well, we have to appreciate, what, what is really the constraint? Is the constraint a quantity of resources? It's not the, it's not the quantity of resources. It's uh, it, it's, do they have the, the quality of, is there a small, very talented, focused, dedicated team um, that's willing to take the risks and, and make something happen? That's By the way, YouTube, fair use. By the way, YouTube, fair use. You have Elon Musk here talking as if he was some revolutionary genius, talking as if that were the case, when in reality, that's not the case. He doesn't come from a poor family. Isn't that right, Mr. Afrikaner? He doesn't come from a poor family. Ain't that right, Mr. Afrikaner? He does not come from a poor family. He's had a leg up his entire life. He is not a revolutionary thinker. He is not a revolutionary designer. Elon Musk is a typical, typical, mediocre example of what it means to be the average white male who's properly funded. That's what it means. Elon Musk is just the typical average white man whose business is properly funded. That's it. That's all. There's nothing special, nothing revolutionary, nothing hybrid. Elon Musk has received subsidies after subsidies after subsidies. He's basically, they changed the laws in America to benefit him. You have a, a electric vehicle tax credit that was made specifically for him. It would be a damn embarrassment if he didn't become the richest man in the world when you've made him part of the gross domestic product. Meanwhile, black farmers are suing decade after decade to get the damn subsidies they're supposed to have for their penny any farms out in Georgia. And Elon Musk got subsidies without asking. Well, he actually did, but you get the idea. They gave it to him without asking and continue to do so. The black farmers can't get what they're supposed to already have gotten decades ago. And this Foreign-born, foreign-born Afrikaner has more rights and privileges than the native-born when you're black. You're damn right. It's a myth. There's no... You, why? Y'all need to work harder. You mean as hard as Elon did? Yeah, sign me up for the subsidies program that Elon got, and I'll show you I got the same work ethic as him. When you gonna sign me up for that, uh, for that subsidy program you got for him? When we gonna get that popping? Notice that whenever you have these people jump up, they never mention that part. They never mentioned that. Show you what I was showing you here just a little bit long ago here. Mark Zuckerberg is back above Elon Musk now. 
And just in case you thought Facebook was dead, somebody's found a way to resuscitate it briefly. So the richest man in the world is Bernard Arnault. Second richest is Jeff Bezos. He's leapfrog Elon Musk and uh, Mark Zuckerberg because, yeah, the electric vehicle scam, the air is coming out of the tires, pardon the expression, of the electric vehicle scam. Nobody wants to buy an electric car except dumb teenagers and people out in California who only drive 10 miles. For the rest of the world, it don't work. For the rest of the world, it didn't work. And whiteness doesn't help. Whiteness didn't help for ingenuity. It doesn't help for ingenuity. It doesn't help for creativity. It damn sure helps for funding. You have an endless supply of it when you do that. An endless supply. But by the way, did you ask any questions about these internet companies? Once again, the government created laws that help them. Section 230, for example, that makes social media companies where people get killed... Your social media, there are, do you all understand something? Being made to be exempt from lawsuits, do you realize what a tremendous leapfrog benefit that is when you tell other citizens, you tell other citizens that if this company commits a crime against you, you cannot sue them. Section 230 prohibits us as citizens from being able to sue these social media companies. That's a piece of legislation written specifically for them. Now, could you imagine where the rap music industry would be today if our rap music moguls of the last four decades had had a Section 230? They were putting two live crew in jail, NWA in jail for indecency. For indecency. These were rappers being threatened with arrest or being arrested because your lyrics are indecent. And yet these white internet companies are immune from any sort of legal action. They've been made immune from any sort of legal action. At all. Wouldn't have been nice if that had happened. Wouldn't that be nice if we had that kind of thing? But we, they made sure we did not have that. Hell, you still got rappers being prosecuted today. No protections whatsoever. None. And it's not accidental. You can't get this kind of stuff. You and me don't have enough money, clout, influence. We can't get laws written for us. And then on top of that, then they come at you with the uh, government subsidies and government uh, tax credits scam. They come at you with that. They come at you with that one. What does that tell you? Folks, I got to tell you, th th uh, four decades ago, we used to have a semiconductor industry in this country four decades ago. America was the birthplace of semiconductors. America was the birthplace of it. And then what happened? These multi-billion dollar corporations offshored everything to Asia, and then Asia became the hub of semiconductors. Now here we are four decades later after these American companies have made hundreds of billions of dollars 
over the last four or five decades, they're now going to get tens of billions of dollars of our taxpayer money as basically a hostage scheme and saying, well, if you want us to build semiconductor plants in America, we want the U.S. government and the taxpayers to pay for us to build new foundries and new uh, semiconductor plants in America. Tens of billions of dollars. They're holding the hostage saying, we'll bring the jobs back if you pay for everything. You need to pay for the transportation, pay for the land, pay for the equipment, pay for the water and mineral rights, pay for, oh yeah, and no taxes. And you got to pay for the building of the plant and the maintenance and everything. You pay for the plant to get built and we keep all the, all the wealth and all the money. We'll keep the wealth. You go ahead and pay for all the expenses. Use the taxpayer money to pay for the expenses. And we keep all the riches and we keep all the profit. And then we'll tell everybody that we pulled ourselves up by our bootstraps. We'll, we'll tell them that. That's what we'll say then. We'll tell them we earned it. That's what we'll say. When they come back and tell their version of the stories here. When they come back and tell their version of the story. They'll come back sounding like they did everything great and everything. And they earned it without saying a word about, by the way, how in the hell are you going to hold people hostage at, to pay you to bring plants back to America? If America's going to spend $200 billion dollars to bring those plants over here, why don't you just find some black folk and fund them like you did Elon Musk to set up the semiconductor plants and tell them other folk, yeah, y'all just stay over there where you are. We'll just go ahead and set this up over here. Why don't we go ahead and just do that instead and don't tell me there's not precedent for that. Why don't we just do that instead? In the chat room, you're correct. We talk about these NFL stadiums and everything else. When you talk about these things there, when you find billionaire white folk, these are people here who are kicking it off lovely. They are kicking it off lovely every time you turn around. There's been no effort put into that. There's been no effort put into that. It is everything that they are given. You don't have a similar story. There is no Elon Musk story in black society. When a black person makes a million dollars, they had to work their asses off and earn that. They had to earn that. And they had to work 10 times harder than any of their white counterparts. And that includes the black coons. They got to work 10 times harder than their white counterparts. Nobody just gives it to you. Not when you're black, they don't. You got to fight tooth and nail to get that. Oh, yeah, and another thing, you got to do it legit. You don't get to cheat. You don't get, when you're black, you don't get to cheat in sports. The white kids get to cheat in sports. When you're black, you don't get to cheat. When you're black and you got to earn something, you don't get to cheat at it. You got to earn that. You don't get to sit up here and cut no corners. You don't get to cut no corners. You got to make sure you do everything legit. In the chat room, uh, John Savant, we didn't get to get you last night, did we? John Savant has two minutes to be on the telephone lines. Didn't get to get to you last night, but uh, we, we got time today. So, John Savant, you have two minutes to be on the telephone lines. Since you still got so much to say here, you have two minutes to be on the telephone lines. The number is 646-787-1933. Just for you, he's the only one allowed to call in. Everybody else, fall back. John Savant's been itching to call in. He's going to go ahead and give us a call now. He's got two minutes to be on the telephone lines or permanent vacation. So the telephone number is now open just for John Savant in the chat room. Since he's had so much he wants to say, he's very triggered and very upset. He was very upset about last night's program about Coleman Cruz. He's very angry and very, very hostile there. He's, he's covered in mayo and, and failure. So 
He's got two minutes to go ahead and give us a call to my mods. If he doesn't, he's got two minutes or he can get banned one or the other since he's had so much to say. Let it never be said that we don't uh, allow them to speak their piece on that. Let them talk, Jason. Let them talk. He's going to be able to go ahead and talk. He's got two minutes, though, to be on the phone line. He's been working his fingers in the chat room. There's no reason he can't work his fingers, sit back, smile, and dial for the number on the screen there. So he's got two minutes or he'll be out of here. Works out perfectly fine for us either way. When you talk about these things there, folks, do you realize they get plugged in? They get plugged in because once you reach a certain level, you become part of the gross domestic product. You become part of the gross domestic product. And then next thing you know, they start making up all kinds of excuses while they throwing money at you. And yet they cannot name a single black person that they do that for. Oprah Winfrey never got a subsidy made for her. Oprah Winfrey, after all them decades, ass kissing and everything else, never had a subsidy made for her. Now, there's somebody on the uh, telephone lines right now. Uh, John Savant needs to put his area code in the chat room so that we can confirm that's him. So, John Savant in the chat room, you need to type in what your area code is because you're the only call we're going to take right now. I suggest you hurry on that one. Because you're about to be two minutes out of time here. But John is going to go ahead and give us his area, type his area code in the chat room. You can type your area code in the chat room, John. And if that's you on the line, we'll go ahead and let you on. If it's not, whoever that is on the phone trying to call in, oh, Jason, can I talk to you? Okay, you can get banned. That's perfectly fine. So right now, we want to speak to the meth babies, not the crack babies. It's not your time there. By the way, if John figures that he doesn't want to say whether he's on or not, that's perfectly fine. John's got 30 seconds to either type his area code in the chat room or he can get banned one or the other. That works perfectly fine too. So John, you got time today. John's got time today. Well, unfortunately, we have time for that day right now. Anybody else I'm not interested in talking to you. You know how it is. You open up the phone lines. And, Ooh, can I speak early? No, it's not your time to say anything there. Call back later. Yeah, but it's really important, Jason. I want to tell you about the Illuminati and the aliens. No, no, no Illuminati, no aliens. Uh, talk about that later. Okay, John has been real quiet in the chat room. He's not saying anything. So he's like, hey, can I, can I, can I mayo troll in peace? No, no, no. You need to call up so everybody can hear the trailer park babbles. I, I didn't know y'all do that. Ah, man, I thought I had my white privilege over here, dude. No, 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 you need to show us some of that smarts and everything. Really, dude? Okay, let's go ahead and uh, give John the permanent vacation. So, John, you had your opportunity. So, Mods, you can go ahead and give him his permanent vacation. He's had his opportunity. Hey, man, I thought I was going to... I had a little male privilege over here. No, no, no. Not at all. You want to know a quintessential example of white privilege? Let me show you a quintessential example of white privilege and how you protect white wealth. I want to show you all something. I want to show you an article, and I've discussed this several times before in the past. I've discussed this in the past before. But I want to show you an article here that gives you an example of how that works. I want to show you an article that gives you an example of how that works. Something that you've never seen before. This is the Kyle Rittenhouse rule. I've showed you all this before. All of us here are familiar with the company Uber. But Uber has had powers and abilities that a company isn't supposed to have. And Uber is just one of many. Uber is just one of many. For those of you who remember, remember uh, Grayball, 
Vox did a very good article, and I want you to see what they said in their article here back from 2017. The secret Uber program that prompted a federal criminal investigation. Criminal investigation? You mean federal criminal? Federal criminal like P. Diddy? Federal criminal? Well, I mean, they say federal criminal, but it ain't Negro criminal. This is white criminal. Now, I want you to listen to this. You hear this kind of stuff here? Uber's bad year just keeps getting worse. Eh, not really. Reuters reported late Thursday that the company is facing a federal investigation that could lead to criminal charges. How'd that work out, everybody here? By the way, six years later, how did that work out? The so-called federal criminal investigation? How'd that work out, everybody? All right. A federal criminal investigation that could lead to criminal charges related to the use of gray ball an internal software program that Uber allegedly, it ain't allegedly, they got the emails and the proof and it's not alleged. When it's white folk doing something illegal, it's always alleged. When it's black folk, they're accused, this is the crime, this is what you did from day one. A software program that Uber used to deceive local government officials and evade enforcement of local laws. Uber is already facing a high-profile lawsuit from Google's Waymo division for allegedly stealing self-driving car car secrets. The company is grappling with charges that it has a sexist corporate culture that has alienated many female engineers. And, perhaps due to these and other problems, it has been losing senior executives at a steady pace. Now there's a possibility, though it's far from a certainty, that the Justice Department will bring criminal charges against the company. The investigation arises from actions Uber took when it was still a small startup trying to break into new markets where local regulators were often hostile to companies trying to compete with incumbent taxi cab companies. Uber's early approach to local taxi regulations was to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. It proved to be an effective strategy for rapid growth. They say ask for forgiveness instead of permission. That what they mean is to break the local laws. To break the laws. Now, folks, I was in the transportation business. If you don't have all your paperwork together, you get your cars taken. You Hell, for my truck drivers, if your paperwork isn't all together, you get your vehicle seized. And yet, for Uber, this never happened. Why not? But federal investigators are now considering whether Uber broke the law with its gray ball program. There's not a wonder they did an elaborate scheme to hide its activities from local government officials trying to enforce taxi laws. Under the gray ball program, Uber would try to identify government officials and give them a fake version of the Uber app that showed inaccurate information about driver locations and didn't allow any rides to be hailed. That made it difficult for local officials to find Uber drivers or impound their vehicles. But it also may have run afoul of federal law. Well, it certainly did, but just notice what they're not saying here. Now, folks, this program was being used for government officials who were trying to prove that Uber was breaking the law by operating in their city. Well, they created a program that would try to identify when one of these government officials, police or something like that, was trying to use the Uber app or use it in certain locations, and it would make sure that the app didn't show drivers around that location or prevented their drivers from being given any calls from that person. So it was a way of blackballing them. Thus the name gray ball. Well, you're being gray. You're not being blackballed. You're being a uh, gray ball. Your so-called Silicon Valley startups with hundreds of millions of dollars of investment, hundreds of millions of dollars of investment being used to circumvent local laws. Folks, ain't that called 
Rico? What? Isn't that the very definition of racketeering? You've, you're paying your engineers millions of dollars to evade the law. Isn't that called racketeering? And yet nobody has said the words Uber and racketeering in the same sentence. Meanwhile, young thug on trial for his life. Flouting local regulations was key to Uber's early growth. I hate these terms. Flouting local regulations. Flouting, you mean breaking the law. Violating the law. Breaking the law was key to Uber's early growth. You see this sitting up here. Each city had a different set of local regulations. And some of these laws were quite burdensome. So to a large extent, Uber's strategy was simply to ignore the law. Did you get that? To ignore the law. The company tried to enter a market so quickly that by the time regulators started cracking down, the company had thousands of loyal customers who would advocate for loosening taxi rules. Folks, you can't operate in a city illegally if they don't allow you to do so. In New York, L.A., Miami, for the traditional taxi cab companies. If you're not chartered with the city, you can't operate. You can't operate. There is no where they ignored the law. They were allowed to operate illegally. In these early years, Uber, seemed off, Uber often seemed like the plucky underdog. In 2012, for example, there was some ambiguity about whether the ride-hailing service was compliant with taxicab regulations in Washington, D.C. No, there wasn't ambiguity. There were not. The D.C. City Council was working on legislation to clear up Uber's legal status, but early drafts looked more like a poison pill than serious reform. One proposal would have forced Uber to charge at least five times the minimum taxi cab fare, effectively limiting it to the high-end black car market and shielding conventional taxi cabs from competition. Luckily for Uber, the company hadn't waited for the city council to clarify the law before beginning operations in D.C. Now imagine if the Turkey Leg Hut opened up their restaurant and said, oh, we're just not waiting for the city of Houston to give us permission. We're just going to go ahead and start operating now. Could you imagine if the Turkey Leg Hut were telling you the story like this? Can you imagine if Nipsey Hussle and the Marathon Store were telling you the story like this? Could you imagine if they were doing that? Could you imagine if they were talking about Nipsey Hussle and saying he ignored local laws? They'd be saying he broke the laws everywhere. He committed felonies. He committed misdemeanors. He was ignoring the law at every turn, breaking it every morning he got up. No regard for the law whatsoever. If you're a black business, you don't make it this far along. If you all agree with that, give me the 100 emoji in the chat room and hit the likes button for me. There's over 4,000 people in here live right now. But if you all agree that if you're black, you don't get to do it like this, that you don't get to tell your story of why we built a billion dollar enterprise going city to city, state to state, country to country around the world, breaking the law everywhere we went over and over and over and over and neither the city nor the state nor the federal government would do anything about it you can't be black and get this this is kyle rittenhouse on rocket fuel you don't get this kind of privilege when you're black you don't get this kind of leeway. You don't get this kind of ability. And there is nothing you can do to get it. If you don't cross all your I's and dot all your, dot all your I's and cross all your T's, and even if you do, you still can't get this kind of treatment. It says here that Uber had a lot of customers who lived in the district and asked them and Uber asked them to call their city council members. Thousands did so, and the minimum fare proposal was dropped. 
Uber was even more aggressive in other cities. In Philadelphia, the company paid thousands of dollars in fines on behalf of its drivers when their vehicles got impounded. Eventually, most regulators relented. That means gave up and surrendered, for those of you who didn't know. And allowed, allowed, allowed Uber and competitors like Lyft to operate in their cities. Thanks to a March scoop in the New York Times, we now know that Uber was also using subterfuge to give itself an edge in its early fights with reg local regulators. Uber's app had a feature called Grayball that identified likely government officials and then showed them inaccurate information about the locations of Uber drivers. If these officials tried to hail a cab, the app would make it look like a driver had accepted the hail and then canceled before reaching the customer. By preventing city officials from locating Uber cars, this made it more difficult for city governments to find drivers or impound their vehicles, leaving them with few ways to enforce the law. So in other words, Uber used what they learned about how the cities were impounding the cars and finding their drivers, and they told their software engineers, now give us an algorithm that will filter those people out. Give us one that will identify government officials and filter them out so they don't find our cars. This is Uber directly saying we're going to war against the government. You ain't, if you're black, you ain't got enough money to buy that type of white privilege. You ain't got it. And you can't get it. There's not enough money on the planet to give a black person that type of privilege. And by the way, they're not the only ones. They're not the only ones. Mark Zuckerberg, when they bought WhatsApp, when they went to the European Union, Professor Scott Galloway has talked about that before. When Zuckerberg bought WhatsApp, they told the European Union that it would be too difficult in order to get around the cost of regulation in the EU, they told the European Union that it, there was no way to integrate WhatsApp into Facebook. It would be too expensive and this, that, and the other. So the European Union told them, okay, you can go ahead and have WhatsApp and we won't give it any of the other thoughts since you can't integrate the two. Within a couple of months, they had WhatsApp integrated with Facebook. After what they just told the European Union, oh, we can't integrate them. You know what the European Union did? It fined them, I think it was $14 million or something like that. Which was, what, less than one day's revenue for the company? Yeah, all these companies ignore the laws. All of them do that. Now, if you black, they coming and shutting your doors down today. And you'd have a bunch of bubble lip niggas sitting up. And, That's the problem right there. You should have been flouting them laws now. You, you, that, that, that what you get. That what you get. You, you, you got to play it straight. Don't be listening to old Jason Black. He he be talking all crooked and all gangsters. Talking about you look here. Uh, you know, if, if, if we can't all be equally comfortable, we're going to be equally uncomfortable. Your ass going to be equally uncomfortable when they come chain your nose up. That's what you going to be. Meanwhile, with the white dudes over here. Meanwhile, with the white dudes over here. That's what you get here. You get that. With them setting up multi-billion dollar enterprises where they're paying employees, paying them to set up ways to, to ignore the laws, that's racketeering. And yet no one is calling it racketeering and no one's being prosecuted for it. But if you black, oh, believe me, you doing the hardest time there is. And oh yeah, one more thing. They would go back decades. They would go back decades. If you committed this crime decades ago, they'd be going back saying, yeah, by the way, you're guilty. Ain't that right, Wesley Snipes? It goes on to say here, according to the Times, 
Uber went to elaborate lengths to identify and grayball city officials. Company managers would manually identify the location of key government offices and blacklist customers who hailed rides there. Customers who signed up with a credit card linked to a law enforcement credit union got extra scrutiny. Uber would even check social media accounts. Damn! Uber would even check social media accounts to see if a customer could be identified as law enforcement. Enforcement officials involved in large-scale sting operations meant to catch Uber drivers would sometimes buy dozens of cell phones. Listen to this, quote, Enforcement officials involved in large-scale sting operations meant to catch Uber drivers would sometimes buy dozens of cell phones to create different accounts, the Times reported. Quote, to circumvent that tactic, see, law enforcement, we're going to buy dozens of cell phones. Uber's like, oh, don't worry, we're here for that. To circumvent that tactic, Uber employees would go to local electronic stores to look up device numbers of the cheapest mobile cell phones on sale, which were often the ones bought by city officials working with budgets that were not large. There's no question that these revelations make Uber look bad. The big question is whether they broke the law. When you're white, it's a question. When it's time to mass incarcerate white people, all of a sudden it's a question. When it's time to criminalize white society, all of a sudden it's a question. Now, if they were black doing this, they would say, of course, it's a crime. Of course it is. Nobody sits here and talks this stupid when they're talking about black folk. It's of course it's a crime. Of course you were evading the law. Of course, what, checking a cell phone? Of course that's Rico. Of course it is. Now that's what they would be saying if Nipsey Hussle were running Uber. If NBA Youngboy owned Uber. If Young Thug owned Uber, he'd already be in prison. Nobody would be talking about Oh, well, you know, it kind of seems criminal. We're not sure if this breaks the law. And now they're multi-billionaires. Now they're multi-billionaires. People, there's something I'm trying to tell you. Don't tell me this damn lie about folks working their way up to nothing. And they are holding 95% of the damn wealth. This isn't just a stranglehold. This is wealth capture. There is nothing you can do to compete against this. When they are telling you that there are two economies, two justice systems, two whole separate systems of law. There is a system of law that funds. Folks, listen to me for a few moments. Listen to me for a moment. Do you all understand that when you have a situation where government subsidies are helping to pay to start and maintain these companies, and then these companies, after they get unfair help getting started, they are then given immunity from law. They are told you may operate however you please. They are given Blanket immunity from the law. Meanwhile, with your black business, open up Turkey Leg Hut. We shutting your ass down. Hey, Nipsey Hussle. Uh-uh, nigga. Shut it down. All over New York. All over Memphis. All over Atlanta. All over Chicago. All over D.C. When you're black, you can't sit up here and open the damn barbecue joint and talk about you ignoring the law. 
we have so many customers, we can ignore the law. Well, if having so many customers means that you can ignore the law, why is it that the turkey leg hut was never extended that? Folks were contacting the city council for the turkey leg hut, and yet nobody came back and said, well, you know, the turkey leg hut has so much support, we've decided to drop our opposition. They're like, drop an opposition, my ass. We're going to drop this damn law on your place. You're not competing against other citizens. You're competing against a rigged game. A game that is not colorblind. And this game isn't about class. Because you couldn't be black and do what Travis Kalanick and Mark Zuckerberg and all the others, Airbnb and all the others, you couldn't be black and do this. That's why it's not a class issue. Because there isn't a single black person who could get this to work for them. Because we can't get the law to ignore us. You couldn't make it happen. Folks, I want you to understand, we talk about white supremacy when we say it is systemic. Here's what I mean. Folks, do you, this isn't breakdowns or failures of policy, Mr. Reich. When you've got not the, pol the police ain't doing nothing, the city council ain't doing nothing. The mayor ain't doing nothing. The sheriff ain't doing nothing. The local prosecutor ain't doing nothing. The state attorney general ain't doing nothing. The governor ain't doing nothing. The U.S. attorney general ain't doing nothing. The FBI ain't doing nothing. The attorney general of the United States ain't doing nothing. Do you realize how many levels of government, how many levels of oversight that you have to have protection from in order to get a Uber to work. And you got blanket immunity from all these levels in every single city, county, and state you go to. And you're a new company. That's not just a prosecutor here or a mayor there who failed. This is systemic. This is a system. A system that is operating across the board the same way. And that as a white person, you know that if you ignore the law, your experience will be radically different from that black person over there. Doesn't matter how much money the black person has, he doesn't have your whiteness. It's not a class issue unless you are counting whiteness as the class. In which case, we still got to deal with the racial aspect. I want you to understand what this is. If you want to know what systemic is and what systemic means and what systemic looks like, this is what it is. They have immunity and protection from law going on decades now. How the hell could you not be the richest people in the world without that? How could you not be? Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk, how the hell could you not be? And you've got immunity from the law. Meanwhile, black people have nothing but super oversight by the law, micromanagement by the law. And yes, the law gets broken, all right. It gets broken when it's time to protect us. The government breaks the laws. When they're looking at white people, white folk break the laws toward the government. When the government's looking at us, the government breaks the laws towards us. The government violates the laws when we go into business. They violate the laws against us. And then you got to prove that you didn't do something wrong. While they're telling you, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. All those illegal aliens that they're allowing into the country now, 
That's immunity from law. You can't drive your car down the street if you don't have proof of insurance, but they can walk across the border and are trespassing and oh, well, that's legit. Folks, that's systemic. That's systemic. Show me where you can go where you get the government to ignore you. Where you can operate as you please. Ain't nobody said nothing. You get to just do it. Make your money however you make it. And then we're going to subsidize you. And then we're going to help fund you. And then we're going to, if you want to come into town, we're going to give you everything you want free when you get ready to expand. And then we're going to pay unemployment insurance. And then we're going to go ahead and make sure if you want to break the law some more when you buy new acquisitions, we'll ignore that for you too. And then we're going to subsidize you on the back end. And then you don't have to pay a penny in taxes. And then you don't have to pay a cent in taxes. You can go and take your stocks in your company and we can make a securities backed loan against it. And while it is true, your securities backed loan will have to be repaid. And yes, at some point, people like Elon Musk do have to pay taxes but they get an ability that the overwhelming majority of us don't. He gets the ability to not have to pay taxes until after he wants to, which brings us to this insider trading. Oh yeah, I'm saying it. The board of directors of these companies that Elon Musk has, where he's got family and friends to sit there and approve giving him bigger and better stock options to make him the richest man in the world again. The company's value is going down, but make sure he's caked off. Now that's supposed to be against SEC regulations. Oh, well, immunity from law, white privilege, sucks to be you. That's insider trading when you think about it. And let me tell you what else is insider trading. Let's be very clear here couple of years ago when Elon Musk finally did pay some taxes, you'll notice that he paid those taxes after he had cashed out billions or hundreds of millions of billions of dollars in stock. Yeah, when Tesla was at its all-time high, Elon Musk sold off a bunch of stock when Tes he cashed out a bunch of stock when Tesla was at its all-time high. What happened a few months later? Tesla's stock drops. Well, ain't that damn well lucky for him. Why, right when Elon Musk is ready to go pay his taxes and cash out, he's just the damn lucky timing of it. Why, he's luckily able to cash out his stock when the company's at an all-time high, and then right after that, boy, he timed that. They say you can't time the market. Remember in stock, you can't time the market. Well, Nancy Pelosi and Elon Musk can time the market like a son of a gun. Obviously, they can time it like a son of a gun. Because he timed that just fine. And he ain't the only one. Ain't that right, Jeff Bezos? Ain't that right, Warren Buffett? Couldn't help but notice that, by the way, Musk ain't the only one. Who knows how to time those cash outs? Why, they never cash out when their company stock is at the bottom. They never cash out when their company stock is at the midway point. Why, they're always able to cash out right when they hit the peak. Isn't that amazing? And I mean, they don't cash out a little bit. It ain't like he just cashed out like two or three. But I mean, they cash out like, 5, 10, 20% of their holdings. I mean, they cash out enormous amounts. Then next thing you know, they're sitting on hundreds of millions of billions of dollars in cash. 
yeah, it's time to pay the taxes. Yeah, but he paid it from a position of strength. Pay back them securities back loans. Let's go ahead and pay out them taxes. And now we can start it all. Folks, when you're Elon Musk, you already got 10 of everything you could ever want. You got 10 houses. You got 10 cars. You got 10 yachts. Elon Musk could spend the rest of his damn life sleeping on his best friend's couch. And he is all the way cool. Even with them 11 kids by them four women. Elon Musk doesn't have to really make another dime so long as he lives. He's going to have an ultra expensive car, ultra expensive houses for the rest of his damn life. He doesn't have to sit up here and fight with stock markets anymore. He already got it. He already got it. While they're telling you and me that we need to work harder. While they're telling you and me that we need to do more. While they're telling you and me that we need to follow his example. With nobody offering us his benefits. With nobody offering us the leg up that they gave him and all the others. Hell, you try to start a music label and they try to put you in prison. When you black and try to make some money, here they come. Okay, let's see your permits. Let's see your, your passes. Do you got proper zoning here? Let me see your tax. Doc Where's your sales document at right here? Okay, your environmental regulations. Can we see that right there? Uber. Okay, just go ahead, sit back, smile and dial and let it roll. Let them sit back, smile and dial and let it roll. You can't do that. Their wealth is protected by law is what I'm trying to tell you. You damn right we need reparations. When this is the system we live in, you damn right we got to have it. Don't tell me a damn thing about what's being given to you. White folk are not out there screaming and yelling about what was given to all these white billionaires. Ain't said a word to them. You and me show up. Wait, wait, wait now. What about the law? You ain't working. Uh, um, excuse me. This fellow over here ain't working. Well, he worked his ass off there. You just didn't do much to him. Man, if you don't get out of my face with this garbage here, cut the check. Elon got his subsidies. Time for me to get mine. What? We'll cut the check. Cut the check. Facebook, YouTube, all these companies here. Yeah, you need to line up to cut your check too. On account of the fact you've been helping them. Yeah, you can go ahead and help them build that up. You sitting up here trying to boost people and everything. You making millionaires at a whim and suppressing black folk. Oh yeah, you got to cut your check too. You're going to have to cut yours too. You're going to cut yours too before it's over. Every time you turn around, black folk, we can't get this kind of treatment no matter what you do. This is how they protect white wealth. And there simply is no black equivalent to this by any stretch of the imagination. You can't name a single black person who gets any of these kinds of benefits, much less got all of them. However, you might disagree. Therefore, the telephone lines are now open. And the number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Your personal access code to the blackest radio program in existence. The only one on, of its kind on planet Earth today. As always, you are welcome to join us. I'd like to thank everyone who has contributed for tonight's program. <laughs> on PayPal, Super Chat, Venmo. My man Chadwick, thank you very much for your support. Big Bopper here, my man Mr. Rich Bird, thank you very much as well. And to everyone else who supports tonight's program, we appreciate that. My new members here on the Super Chat, uh, Boss Cobra and everybody else, thank you very much for signing up here as well. Blueberry Muffin and all y'all, thank you very much. We're going to take a very brief commercial, non-commercial break. When we come back, we'll take your phone calls and more. This is The Black Channel. Hello, my name is Steve Burgess. I'm the author of this book, Guidelines for the Successful Student. 
a closer look at parenting your school-aged child. In this book, I've explained the role of the parent and the student in addition to what accommodations, procedures, rewards and consequences and expectations that need to be in place to ensure student success from primary to high school. This book is available on Amazon.com. For more information, please visit my link tree at Easy One on One and to access my latest podcast, A Teaching Moment with Mr. B. Thank you all for listening. A white supremacist assassin seeks revenge. Corrupt FBI agents with evil intentions. Dangerous black collaborators dedicated to treason. Occam Jeffers must defeat them all and somehow survive. One misstep and he's a dead man. Join Occam Jeffers as he looks the devil in his blue eyes and tells him, Black First. A sequel to the underground hit War of the Heart, Spirit of 1811 Publishing presents God Love Us on sale at Amazon. Pre order and save today. Visit Spirit of 1811 Publishing.com and show your love. To experience all the benefits of Ash Kick and Natural Body Butter. With skin so smooth and soft, you'll thank us for it. Shop Ash Kick and All. That's A S H K I C K I N dot com. Hi, this is Brenda Starr, creator of poetry with a purpose and author of the book press but not crushed press but not crush is an anthology of political poems that address current and historical issues in american descendants of slave population and african-american population the book describes slavery and its residuals jim crow segregation social depredation and other relevant issues to American descendants of slaves and African Americans, including the current political climate that does not address our issues. This is the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority, and the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933, and we're going to take your phone calls here. I want to thank all of you for joining us here tonight's program here as well. You could be spending your time doing something else here, but being at the Haven of Intelligent Black Thought, that is, as always, welcome. Let me go ahead and get caller from area code 410. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Mike from Gaithersburg. Okay, Mike from where? Gaithersburg. Okay, Gaithersburg, where's that? Maryland. Okay, Mike from Gaithersburg, Maryland. What's on your mind? So while you're sitting there watching Elon Musk pocket and talk about Nancy Pelosi and this and that, why don't you go ahead and tell us who you voted for in the last election? I'll wait. I voted for your mom with a G-string thong on. That's who I voted for. Unfortunately, she didn't win. She wasn't running. Who did you vote for? Oh, no, she wasn't. Election? No, she wasn't running, She but she was dropping it. Unfortunately, she... she she didn't have Who did together, you vote so. for in the last election? That's about the best we could do there. So yeah, that that's that psycho coon. And by the way, let me go ahead and take his number here. So yes, yeah, so his his mom didn't win. She didn't, she was trying. She had her metamucil and her hover round. She had her Metamucil. It, it, y'all, it was the strangest fundraiser you ever, it was the strangest political fundraiser you ever saw. Bunch of little old ladies with their Depends and their, uh, at the bingo hall. Craziest political fundraiser you ever saw in your life. So I'm very sorry she didn't win. Because that means she's going to run again. I wasn't voting for her because I liked her. I voted for her. Okay, if, I, if, we get you, if we get you in the office, will you stop running? Will this be the last time we see you? That means she's going to be back. Call of Miracle 559. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Oakland. 
Name's Martin. All right, Martin from Oakland, what's on your mind? All right, I'm um, I'm thinking when I look at the um, the the talking points that are always thrown out about the wealth gap, right? Um, I wonder if they will in the future compare it. Um, compare black people to the immigrants right now it's always you know um, black people and and latinos or black people and people of color compared to white people but like one day will there be like some sort of a i don't know a cloak and dagger experience that we'll go through where we'll see ourselves being compared directly with um uh, against you know non, non-black people oh you already are and some sort of a immigrant no no no, no brother brother you, that, we're already there mm. we're already there how so they're all they're, they're already doing it now that's their whole reason for saying, bring them into New York and this, that, and the other. Oh, they're, they're already saying that. They're already <laughs> saying that, brother. We're not on our way to that. They're, they're doing it right now. The hell they've been doing it. Okay, let me explain something to you all here. Let me find out here. Uh, how, how old are you? Uh, 34. Okay, you're 34 years old. So you, you were only coming of age when cats like me were already knee-deep off of them into it. Let me tell you something. We've been hearing this damn illegals work harder than everybody else in black folk now for five, six decades, and it's a damn lie. Damn. I re- listen to me. I remember being in high school back in the 90s. I remember being in high school. And all of us, all of us in high school, all of us wanted a construction job because the cats we saw working construction, they had the nice Chevy pickup trucks with the flare side on it. We from the South. So, I mean, that's what all of us wanted in high school. Even if, you weren't young, even if you weren't old enough to drive it yet. All of us wanted to have one of those. So that was going to be the lick to it. Okay, well, explain to me why it is in the early 90s. None of a, all of us talking about going into construction and none of us could get a job. They were building the uh, casinos down on the riverfront here. We couldn't work at them working construction. They were building mm-hmm. the riverboat hotels. We couldn't get in. When they were doing the renovations on the uh, skyscrapers downtown, we couldn't get in and into that. They were bringing illegals from out of state. I know because eventually I did get a subcontractor who uh, let me work for them for a little while on one of them. It used to be the uh, Isle of Capri. When they were doing the changeover from the Isle of Capri into, um, they they were doing a changeover on it uh, and they were uh, finishing out the hotel. They're finishing out the hotel, the Isle of Capri. And, mm-hmm. oh, it was illegals from every damn where on that thing. I mean, they had a whole yeah, big-ass bus too, of like. them there. And what I'm saying is, now, mm-hmm. me and the black men, all of us were working with a damn subcontractor who had a very limited contract on it. That was all the black men were sitting over there. That's where we were. But the illegals... They were the ones doing all the interior work. So let me get this straight. The black men who live here can't get hired on these construction jobs, but y'all got illegals out here all over the damn place bringing them here. Now... We're pulling the vocational training out of our public education. Okay, well, hold on a second. Okay, slow slow down. Mm -hmm. Calm down for a moment here because you're a lot younger. There's elements of this. It's not just about... It, it, that's a that, that while you're what you're saying is accurate. Understand those okay. those Mexicans I worked with, Mexicans and South Americans, they were not skilled labor, sir. Mm-hmm. Those Mexicans and South Americans were not skilled labor. No, they weren't. No, they couldn't be. They weren't. So they that's were what I'm saying about this is not a situation now. where you'd be looking at oh well the skilled trades and stuff in the mm-hmm. schools and they took it out. Them cats wasn't doing that. That's not what they were doing. They were there by the dozens. Furthermore, there's certain things that don't even really require that. For example, when you're doing a running electrical in a building, contrary to popular belief, electrical doesn't require, Mm -hmm. you know, dozens and dozens of people to run electrical. It does. That doesn't require you need a squad of people. Of course, depending on how big the building is. Certainly you do, but it doesn't require an army of people to do that. So for certain things, you don't really require that. Hanging drywall does not require skills trades training. Spraying sheetrock does not require that. Um, Plumbing does. 
it, the physical installation of like the hot tubs because they, they, they when they're yeah. building Alec Capri Hotel they have a hot tub in every room. The physical installation does not require that. You can teach your lazy ass nephew to do that in a week. These, these are not skills that take months and years to learn. You can grab your lazy ass nephew and teach him to put in the bathtub and caulk around it. You can teach him how to do that with proficiency in a week. Hell, you got Home Depot. Home Depot gives weekend classes for it. They give weekend classes. So this is not, it, it, it's not really that, for, for skill I trades, you, yes, but in many regards, there's a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't require that, and the dudes I was working with were not doing the skill trades work. Now, I have also worked in places where you did have skill trades a little bit more than that. I've done warehouse work, building and constructing warehouses. Um, and I'm not going to say that, these, that the white dudes up there were not skilled at what they did. They certainly were. I'm not here to take that from them. What I am saying, though, is, by the way, you were the only skilled labor that was getting paid for it. Couldn't help but notice that. So the, the rest of these folks that bring in this stuff, it, and by the way, for me and the other black males and whatnot, once again, here we go. We're working for a subcontractor with a limited contract. The Mexicans were not in the same boat. Now, how in the, you're telling, you're, this is back in the early 90s is what I'm trying to tell you. Not 2024, not 2014, not 2004, the early 90s. And in reality, for the cats who are older than me, they know it goes back to the 70s. But it really gets kicking off in the 90s when it goes into hyperdrive. And what I'm saying is you have plenty of young black males who are willing to work them jobs. I should know I was one of them. And yet they made sure that they were sitting there telling you they can't get nobody to work. And yet here we were saying, excuse me, hello. And they acting like they don't see us. So that's not accidental. That's engineered. And it's always been engineered. And here they are today telling you, yep, the local folk here just don't want to work. And that's not, that's Mm -hmm. never been what it is. You bring in these illegals. They Mm -hmm. don't have rights. You can pile them up. You don't have to pay for medical insurance. You don't have to pay for health insurance. Hell, you don't have to pay for life insurance unless somebody really gets killed. And you can hire the little women and whatnot. Ain't that right, Schwarzenegger? And if you want to feel on her or everything else, you ain't got to worry about her me tooing you. So there's things, there's a whole bunch of things they like to do with the illegals that (laughs) simply can't be done with us. So you're targeted for a reason. It's never been true. Never. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Biggest lie in the damn world. You got plenty of black folk, plenty of young black men and women. Never been a shortage. Isn't a shortage now. There wasn't a shortage then. There isn't a shortage now. They tell this lie decade after decade. Hell, you can actually go back to post antebellum slavery. Right when they start kicking off with the labor unions, can't get nobody to work. Folks are lazy. That's very interesting. There were no lazy people on the plantations. That's very interesting. It's only, well, we need to circumvent the law because folks are lazy right after the plantations go away. All of That's when you start hearing about lazy people. Once it's time to pay them, now you start hearing about lazy people. Wasn't a lazy person to be found on them plantations. Two years later, look at all these lazy folk. Well, have you paid them yet? Well, there's the problem. They want to get paid. Shouldn't they just like the labor of working? Well, get your ass out there and get the labor of working. Well, no, I have to be in charge of coming up with the great ideas. Recognize game. Call America 347. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yes, peace and blessings. This is John Mann from Manhattan, New York. All right, John from Manhattan, what's on your mind? Okay. Uh, no, John, John Mann from Manhattan, Oh, New John York. Mann, John like Mann. To, okay, John Mann, what's for, on your mind, brother? Yeah, I would like to thank you for, you know, providing uh, a necessary service. I know Dr. Amos Wilson, Malcolm X, Nat Turner, Denmark, Jesse, Gabriel, Gabriel Prasa, all the brothers, and, and those warrior sisters, ancestors, definitely enjoy your energy. Uh, economic warfare is definitely going on. Economic terrorism is definitely going on with us, against us. Um, we're not, for the most part, rank and file brothers and sisters, especially the young ones, aren't aware that what warfare is. Um, there's casualties of war 
nonstop. Every time inventions come out, whether we're the inventors or not, they wield the inventions against us for profit. If we study, if we study the history of what was going on in the latter part of the 1800s, like 1890, 1910, basically it's over now. The only difference is, is that they now have technology and they have refined it where they need a, a pool of disposable people, you know? And evidently, um, this immigration supremacy that's going on with all these um, border runners invading with or without arms over the border, uh, basically, they are the new wave of disposable people who will clash against us because of the fact that we are too comfortable with being prey. Well, I mean, they're not um, they're not going to clash that? against us. Some, they're already doing it now. I want everybody to understand we got to update our files on that. This is not a future effort that could reach a breaking point. New York has broken. Uh, California has broken. Southern Florida has broken. Uh, New Jersey has mm -hmm. broken. Michigan is pretty much getting ready to break. So we're not on our way anymore. We, we've Several places have already broken. Colorado has broken. Arizona has broken. Uh, Seattle has mm -hmm. broken. We can go down the list here. Mm -hmm. So we're not on our way. They, they've already fallen. You know those old sayings when they say, if black don't wake, if black folk don't wake up, if black don't folk don't change, XYZ will happen. Folks, it's already happened. We're already there. We ain't on our way. It's already happened. The fires are already burning. Stuff is already in ashes. We already there. We these are not warning alarms anymore. These are fire alarms. Call from area code 980. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jesse. This is Hutch calling from Wilmington, North Carolina. Oh. All right, Hutch from uh, Wilmington. What's on I your mind? I want to say, yeah, you know, in the midst of this whole Diddy situation uh, with Cassie, you know, exposing him allegedly. I mean, we can go back to 2016. If you remember, Elon Musk got, uh, you know, exposed by that one police with a flight attendant. Uh, you know, exposing it. He was like exposing his uh, privates on the plane or something, something about a you know private massage. And then you know, he had his. I think he paid her off like two hundred fifty thousand and got that silenced. So you know, not only are these uh, white billionaires safe from uh, the law, but they also safe from the media crucifixion that we've seen with a lot of these uh, these richer black folks. So you know, that's all I really had to say on that topic. Yeah, I mean, like I say, the media, however, goes quiet for them. The media doesn't bring these things back up. They don't reinvoke them. Elon Musk, like I say, what they realize is, ah, we can't really do a takedown on him because we need him. We need him. You know, um, like Drake said, they need me more than they hate me. And it's true. So you don't get that kind of protection. They don't need you more than they hate you. They just hate you. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a caller from area code 618. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Mary, I'm calling from East St. Louis, Illinois. Okay, it sounds like she's on her bed, on her stomach, in her footies, <laughs> so she is laid back with the incense burning. What is on your mind? Um, I just wanted to add to the fact that um, America never fails or from her roots, which is Roman day, you know, Roman. Um, ideology um, checks the citizens, breaks the citizens back um, for the five percenters, the richer class, and um, they can spend the, the money at their will, however they like, turn to see, or any endeavors, and we pay the cost for it. And then they are ushering on, the, you know, all these illegals through the borders, cheap labors, expendable people, like you said earlier, that, you know, they could do um, whatever they would like with these people. They know it wouldn't fly with us. So they are like, we have to get more docile and controllable people who will, you know, go along with the plan of white supremacy. So everybody has to ball down, and um, they're simply... You got to show up the Vaseline and doing what they will with these people, and they're okay with it because they have their white privilege card 
until white supremacy decides to remove that privilege. Well, you know, so I mean, I think a lot talking. of people might think that what you're saying is a little uh, a little far fetched, but you're actually a lot more accurate than people might want to give you credit for because America is literally directly an analog of the Roman empire. However, the point that you're making, I think is that not only is it structurally and governmentally an analog of Rome, it is also culturally and philosophically an analog of Rome. And many of the things that, I mean, for example, okay, you talk about Julius Caesar and well, how in the world did he do all this empire building and get it to kick off and whatnot? He had lieutenants and they were the ones who actually, he had to rise to the ranks. And once he got in charge, he had lieutenants and they were the ones who were going off fighting the wars and winning new territories and things. And basically they would be rewarded with fiefdoms of their own and control of their own if they were successful. So you can, that's what we meant by war was an economy. So just like in capitalism, they say to the victor goes the spoils. Well, that's a that's a slogan from war. And yet that has been moved over into economics seamlessly. You hear all your economics people use that phrase to the victor goes the spoils. Well, that's that's a that's a that's a slogan from the old days of sandals and, and swords warfare. And yet they're using it here. So, yes, with that being an economy, the all they did was just say, okay, well, we don't have to chop their heads off except every once in a while. And then um, <laughs> just implement the same thing. Okay, he's got his, what you can get, what you can take. What are the rules of taking it? Well, what can you get away with? Well, employees can't get away with anything. Ooh, let me be self-employed so I can get away with everything. And then next thing you know, you're Travis <laughs> Klanick. I'll let you have the last word. Exactly. Um, Racketeering. And um, Rico acts treason. This is the good old boys' way. This is their their government and how they get down. And we don't have that privilege. So just FBA stand strong. Black first, always. Black first, this is thank you for giving us a call here tonight. Yeah, buddy, she is sitting over there on the bed and her camisole twirling her natural hair. Sitting up there sniffing that bottle of ash kicking. Got some Lauren Hill or some Erica Badu playing back there. She's like, Jason, can you just put me back on holds? No, baby, you, you can hear me in stereo actually on YouTube. So I ain't mad at you. Call Miracle 779. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? My name is Sonny Knight from Tenley Park, Illinois. All right, Sonny Knight from uh, where in Illinois? Tenley Park. All right, Tenley Park. What's on your mind? Well, I'm a small money lender, and I need to know your thoughts about becoming an LLC or staying an independent black-owned service. Be one. Okay. Well, brother, you might want to call me on my other YouTube program. We're talking about something a little bit different tonight, but I can definitely address that question for you. Um, You definitely want to check my other YouTube program. If you want to email me, we can see about doing that for you. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Let me get caller from area code... Hmm. Five seven one. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? My name is Shakir. I'm calling from Arlington, Virginia. All right, Shakir from Arlington, Virginia. What's on your mind? Yeah. Um. I was listening to what you said about Facebook and Uber and how they flouted the law, but I it made me think that these Caucasians, their desire to make money is only a symptom of all sorts of emotional disturbances, and greed is only one of them. Well, I mean, here's the thing. I, I don't want you all to misunderstand what's, what it's about. Money is worthless without the power component. Capitalism is merely a system that facilitates trans, cultivation of or transfer of power. That's all it is. They hand you a dollar bill. Here's the amazing thing about a dollar bill. The dollar bill, you hand it to somebody and they are to give you full faith and credit for labor. You can exchange a dollar bill for labor. That's what makes a dollar bill powerful. I can either go off and do this labor myself or I can hand this to another person and redeem it for labor. That's powerful. 
In the old days, you had to be a monarch and you had to order people to do it. Now you've got the ability to do that simply by handing them paper and then you start to cultivate that and build the society around it. That's why slavery was so important. But I don't want you all to ever lose sight of the fact that they're not fighting over money. This is all about power, period. That's the goal. That's always been the goal. That's the only goal. The foundation of everything they do is the money, but the money is merely the tool that gets them the power. It facilitates the power. Without the power, it's useless. They want to have the ability to determine who eats and who doesn't. No, I mean who literally eats and who literally doesn't. They want to have the power to determine who literally has clothes on their back and who literally doesn't. They want to have the ability to determine who starves and who doesn't. They want to have the ability to take a look at your woman and say, she's mine. And then the first thing they do after they say she's mine is they make her do the most degrading things they possibly can. Because you see, respect is not amusing. Degradation is entertaining. Respect isn't entertaining, but degradation is. Yeah, you can cultivate power with res by respecting people. You can display power respectfully. But if you want to display real power, show you can disrespect people. Show you can abuse them. So you can take advantage of them and you've got immunity from law. Now that's real power. Take a look. When you take a look at the top, okay, let me go ahead and run this back to you all right quick, real quick here for you. On your screen, you see the story I was talking to you here before from Bloomberg about Mark Zuckerberg has passed uh, Elon Musk again because they just play musical chairs with who's the richest people in the world. Okay. Listen to me for a moment. Number one is Bernard Arnault, who's never been a part of that damn spitball contest they have on the internet. Bernard Arnault of LVMH has never been a part of that. Who are the next three people? Jeff Bezos, Mark Zuckerberg, Elon Musk. Number one is Bernard Arnault, but number two, three, and four are Jeff Bezos, Elon, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and Elon Musk. And guess what? None of them three people like each other. They're all sitting up here going at each other. Zuckerberg don't like Bezos. Bezos don't like Zuckerberg and nobody likes Elon Musk. Elon, uh, Jeff Bezos would walk up and bust Elon Musk in the eye if he thought he could get away with it. And Mark Zuckerberg is challenging him. Hey, partner, we can get in this damn octagon and get on. All that capping you doing on social media. He said, hey, Playboy, hey, I got billions of dollars. I can get that octagon built in a minute. And we can go ahead and see if you still got the same amount of cap you want to throw in my face in person. I mean, these dudes want a fist fight. You thought it, you think it's bad in the rap music game. These are billionaires talking about if I ever caught you in person without your bodyguards around. Partner, we can get at it. Okay. Now you think about that for a few moments. Number two, three, and four. And this is their world view. Every time you turn around, this is the world view. Elon Musk, a dozen kids, Mark Zuckerberg, whatever the hell he's doing out there in Hawaii in that bunker. Jeff Bezos, don't leave him alone in South America. And certainly don't, don't expect that you will survive working at his warehouses because often you don't. Folk literally die at Amazon's fulfillment centers because the air conditioning ain't on. Don't let that bother you, though. Call America code 914. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, Jason. Uh, it's Michael. I'm calling from New York, uh, Bronx, New York. All right, Michael from the Bronx. What's on your mind? Yeah, I was listening to you earlier. You was talking about um, how the people, the immigrants, how they, you know, they work for. I used to work at a company back in 2011, CNX Grocers up in Chester, New York, and it was a, it was a lot of migrants there. And it's not, and that's when I learned they don't work for cheap. Me and them was getting the same thirteen dollars an hour. The only different 
there was a, the, the legals wasn't getting no uh, medical benefits. I was getting medical benefits because I'm legal. I, but they was they was illegal. They was only they was they was just they was getting the thirteen dollars an hour that I was getting. No, they just was they no. wasn't. No, 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 no. All right, for those of you who are not self-employed and don't understand how, or if you've never run a business employing people and don't understand how this works. All right, if you have somebody who's working off the books, even if they are able to get you to pay them the same quote-unquote amount hourly, brother, there's a whole lot that you, a whole lot more that you're getting paid that you're unaware of because the government did these things long before you were born. Social security taxes. As an employer, I got to pay both. In case you all didn't know, employers have to pay social security taxes twice. In case you didn't know. Medicare, Medicaid. These are taxes. And yet, if, if I can just pay you the $13 an hour and don't have to fulfill any of those other things, I'm already saving money. I'm already saying I'm saving money. I don't have to send it to my bookkeepers. I don't have to do any of that. I just go ahead and cut you your check and that's it. And we're in a sanctuary city. So ain't nobody going to sit up here and say anything. Oh, I'm, I'm doing good. So way beyond just health benefits, which are expensive enough. But then again, I say it's expensive, but if you're a, uh, now the, the, for those of you who are not from the New York metropolitan or state area, you know, they worked very, very hard to keep, you know, Walmart and things like that out of their state and stuff like that, which is crazy. So pedophiles in Walmart out. I don't get it. But OK, uh, you got grocery stores up there, you know, and they're, they're, they're not names that anybody who lives south of Pennsylvania would recognize. But for folks up there, they get it. Now, the, the issue, though, is that these are mass employers. So they've got, you know, 1,500, 2,000 employees through their different stores and whatnot. Well, when it goes to buying health care insurance, you're, you're going to get it. It's not going to be as expensive as you might think it is because, of course, you're paying it for all these people. You're getting all these people insured. Most of them are not actually going to use it because that's how insurance works. So in reality, believe it or not, insurance tends to work really good as long as you're not having to use it. So health care insurance, while certainly it does have a cost to it, do not misunderstand me. That actually, in a lot of cases, is not going to be nearly as expensive as some of these other things would be. If you can get out from up under social security taxes, Medicare taxes, Medicaid taxes, franchise taxes, if you have them, you know, there's a number of other things and health insurance taxes. Oh yeah, one more thing. You might not be paying them overtime. Now, if we're not, if we're getting around all those things that government regulations would ordinarily require, man, I mean, wow. Yeah, it just it, not paying not paying the uh, health insurance. Oh man, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I'll let you have the last word. No, I just wanted to share that with you. That's that's all. Because I know you was right when you was when you was speaking to the was speaking to the other gentleman. You was telling them about um, that's a lie that white people tell black people about. Oh, the immigrants work for cheap. I've experienced it. I used to believe it, but then I. I've learned that's not true because we was both getting $13 an hour, and I was curious, so I asked myself, how much do you get paid? He said, I get the same pay you get. The only thing I don't get is the health insurance. That's yeah, what I learned. In, in, which case he, in which case, he probably doesn't pay the health care insurance. Maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. But they, they wouldn't. you don't pay illegals because you're paying the same thing that you would pay, you know. Uh, legal people. You, don't pay, you, you pay them because you're, get, you're able to do something you can't do with legals. That's the only reason you do that. You do it because you get something you can't get from them. Cause it's not a matter of, it's not a matter of workforce or human resources. It's a matter of, okay, can I, can I have an employee who doesn't mind not having healthcare insurance? Can I have an employee who doesn't mind not paying into social security? Can I have an employee who doesn't mind Medicare, Medicaid and the illegals don't care about that because they know ever since Ronald Reagan, uh, no person can be turned away from help for health care at the ER. So that's where they go for their primary care insurance. So they know I don't need insurance. Legally, you have to see me at the ER. So, okay, if I really got to go, then I'll go to the ER. And the rest of you folks paying health insurance, oh, you'll pay for me. 
Your, your health insurance premiums and your tax dollars will pay for me at the ER. And here's the thing about it. These so-called employers giving them this under the table money. Yeah, it's under the table for him and the rest of us are subsidizing it. Now, if you went and arrested some white men who were breaking the law, then you would see that stop. The problem is, it's not, it's not uh, black men who are doing it. That's the issue. Because if we were doing that and taking all these liberties, oh, they'd have rounded all of us up decades ago. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get a call from air code 267. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, uh, Jason, this is MB calling from Philly. All right, MB from Philadelphia, what's on your mind? Uh, yeah, this is a great uh, topic tonight here uh, on this broadcast here. And several things come to my mind regarding the fact that there's, you know, white folk that benefits from the uh, from the uh, laxing of the laws that they should be complying to. And the fact that is there are corporations that, you know, you cited as right sharing corporations and, of course, Musk. One thing that also comes to my mind also is the fact that you have, I guess there's also, um, even with the uh, laxness of that, there's also uh, folks that would, that's not a guarantee for the fact that some of these folks are still going to be scamming. Like, there's still going to be these folks that's still going to be, like, white folks by and large are number one when it comes to like financial scams and like you're talking about Sam Bingham Freed, the Elizabeth Holmes. These folks still wanna get caught up with you even with that insurance of, you know, their privilege and everything. So that's you know, even with it they a lot of these folks still gonna squander the fa- squander away their privilege on doing too okay. much, I should say. Like You know, now a lot of you might think that the caller is just kind of rambling or can't figure out what the importance is here, but he's actually made an extremely valid point. Okay, let's go back a little bit. Elliot Spitzer, former attorney general of the state of New York, became governor, and then, of course, because he did such a good job, he actually did a good job as attorney general, which is why Wall Street got him uh, hemmed up and got him out of the governor's office, which shows you who really runs New York. But, um... I mean, he was going after insider traders. That's why they hated him, because he was an attorney general who actually did his damn job. He was an attorney general who actually did his job. Now, what most attorney generals will tell you is that they can't really crack down on insider trading because, well, these are financial crimes are complex crimes, and we worry that we can't really get... Juries don't often understand the complexities of financial crimes. So what happens is you hear cases like Travis Kalanick and Uber where they start talking about uh, criminal investigations, but when it ends up, it just ends up being a fine as opposed to folk getting walked out in handcuffs. Elliot Spitzer was asked about this, about why was it you were so prolific at indicting people and your successors and in all these other states haven't? And he said it's because they don't want to. He said, if you want to make a case against them, you can. Not to say it's a slam dunk all the time, but if you want to, you can. They have not been trying to prosecute these cases. They haven't been trying to. They went after Elizabeth Holmes. Yeah, you got to sit up here and rip off half the damn Eastern Seaboard before they come and get you. All these white dudes setting up all these fraudulent ass Bitcoin exchanges, ripping people off and every damn thing else. Okay, they talk about the Sam Bankman frees, but do you all realize there have literally been thousands of rug pulls? Mm-hmm. Sam Bankman fried where he messed up at was he went super high profile. He wants to get stadiums named after him and hobnob with, you know, it's Tom Brady. You got mental issues, Cat. Folks, what Sam Bankman fried did or what he was trying to do is what they call a rug pull. That's what Bitcoin has been used for. It's not legit. They bring in a bunch of people. You buy into some dodgy ass coin. You get on some exchange. You give in your dollars. He keeps your dollars. He hands you back a token and says, here you go. And then next thing you know, the coin goes belly up. Now, in the world of cryptocurrencies, what they really want to do, you'll have a currency, for example, that is one one hundredth or one one thousandth of a cent in value. One one thousandth of a penny in value. Okay, well, the guys who started the cryptocurrency, it didn't cost them anything to start it. 
So if they get themselves, for example, a hundred million shares of it, and if they can get the value of it to just one penny, do you realize that's probably made them millionaires and billionaires? Now that's the game they play. And then once it gets to value of a penny or five cents or 10 cents, God help you if it's 50 cents, they cash all theirs out and all the rest of you idiots are left holding the bag. That's a rug pull. They pulled the rug on you. And while we talk about the Sam Bankman Freeds and the rest of them kind of cats, the truth of the matter is that there have been thousands of rug pulls. Somebody in the chat room, Logan Paul. We can go down the list. There are there have been thousands. Nobody going to jail. Hell, Logan Paul is at WrestleMania tonight, for God's sake. What? Damn. Logan Paul is at WrestleMania tonight. Strutting around with some fake ass belt. Getting headlines. Done rug pulled the daylights out of these people. And he's styling and profiling at WrestleMania. You try that. And they gonna walk out. And as soon as you get body slammed by the rock, your arm go out the ring, they're gonna slap some cuffs on it. So drag his ass on out. Don't don't worry, sir. He loses by disqualification. Get your ass in this paddy wagon. That's how the night gonna end for you. But dude, this, when we talk about financial crimes, man, you talk about these phony ass accountants, these phony ass business managers, these phony ass hedge fund managers with all these dodgy ass financial instruments. The financial crisis of 2008 should have seen thousands of financial analysts and brokers sent to prison. Only sent one. Should have been thousands. Only sent one. He was some low level Indian dude. Mozilla and the rest of them who started that garbage, all of them walked, floating, and keeping the damn money. So when it comes to financial crimes, that is a white privilege crime. Folks talk about sex crimes being white privilege. Eh, the, you, I mean, you hit the nail on the head. When it comes to financial crimes, I'm not talking about little stuff. The big stuff, the life-changing money, hundreds of millions and billions of dollars, oh, that's their kingdom right there. You try to bring your ass over, you'll never get that far. You can't be a black person and make it to those levels in the financial industry. One, number one, they won't open the doors to you. But number two, um, as soon as you, you do something illegal, the SEC coming knocking for you. And you ain't going to get the Bernard Madoff treatment. You get to sit there for two damn decades ripping people off. They're gonna be like, oh, no, the first time you did that, oh, don't worry. We got an SEC agent who knows how to get you in jail. Wait a minute. Y'all didn't go after Bernard Madoff for decades and all these other folk. Yeah, well, we got you, so come on. Now, that's what it'll be if you try it. If you try the exact same thing they're doing, everybody else going to walk, you're going down. So you actually make a very good point when it comes to these financial crimes. Yeah, that's set aside for them. That, that, that's a zone where folks are committing billions and hundreds of billions of dollars in fraud and ain't nobody going to jail. I'll let you have the last word. Yeah, that's pretty much it right there. And then even on top of that, there's also, you know, businesses that still flounder out even after taking public money. Like there was a train company, I forgot the name of it, that took $700 million. That's, they still floundered out after taking public money. I forgot the name of them. But, yeah, even with all that, you know, not, you know, that's just crazy right there. But not only am I playing on that B1. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. In the chat room, you're talking about Omi and the Hellcat. Omi and the Hellcat went to court talking about, hey, the, the, let me show you all these white folk who do the same thing. Y'all ain't indicting them. He got his wake-up call. There's the key words, all the white folk. Take a look in the mirror. You ain't one of them. Hey, all these white folk doing it. Y'all ain't indicting them. I just, I'm doing the same. I bought the equipment from them. I'm doing the same thing they doing, but the only one you indicting is me. So everybody else get to walk, but I, I get a prison stint. Yes, that's the way that works. Sure is. So your attorney generals didn't have the ability to go after nobody except me. Just me. All the white dudes who were doing it before me, all the white dudes selling the equipment, all the white dudes after me, none of them can get an indictment. Just me. Yep. Get your ass in the cell. 
And by the way, have you all heard of another indictment like that since? Hey, by the way, one more thing for anybody who wants to uh, dispute me on that. Have you heard of another indictment like that since? Now, you do know that racket is still going on right now, right? You do know it's still going on right now today, right? But you haven't heard about anybody else being indicted. Just him. Did you notice that? Yeah, now how is it all of a sudden they arrested him and cleaned up the streets? Is that what happened? They arrested him and everybody else said, Ooh, we better stop. He was the only one? Come on now. No, you, you don't have, you're not part of the clique. Your wealth doesn't get protected. Call him Erico 206. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hi, this is Agnes calling from Seattle, Washington. All right, Agnes from Seattle, what's on your mind? Hi, uh, excellent analysis about um, the financial crimes and how that's just basically an extension of uh, white supremacy and white privilege. Um, just to touch on a couple of highlights that you mentioned with uh, hiring illegals and cheap labor, it's actually uh, cheaper for these folks to hire illegals because, you know, they don't have to pay any kind of taxes on them at all. And they don't even have to pay the uh, minimum wage rate. What happened with Amazon back in 2013 in the city of Seattle was that the city of Seattle was going to issue a head tax, okay? And Amazon fought it, ended up relenting. What happened was they found out at all of the Amazon warehouses with, within the city limits and just outside the city limits, the people who they were hiring, well, first of all, they didn't have the work permits. And second of all, they didn't have to pay these folks any kind of insurance, anything. In the city of Seattle, they make everybody take insurance um, through the state-based insurance in Washington. That's just only where I am. It may, it may differ. Another thing that got Amazon warehouses was the fact that because they tried to skirt city uh, minimum wage laws and tax rates, they were going to actually fine. It was the uh, state attorney general at that time was getting ready to fine Amazon on that. So what Amazon did was they pulled out of the city of Seattle their warehouses and decided to go to other parts of the state where there would be less scrutiny. Well, that didn't work because Amazon ended up having to pay not only taxes or a head tax, but they also had to start taking taxes for the folks who were documented, and they had to start laying off undocumented folks. Then on top of that, everybody had to be paid the state minimum wage rate, which was at that time 13. And now the state minimum wage is 16. Amazon wasn't going to do that. Well, what happened was they ended up in state court, and they had to settle out for the wage rate, skirting wage and labor laws, and oh boy, <laughs> maybe that's why Bezos ran off to South America. That's all I have to say, and be one. Well, like I say, um, unless they're going to incarcerate them, it doesn't matter because, I mean, a fine, what's a fine for Amazon? What's, what's a fine for Facebook? Unless you're going to give them a hundred billion dollar fine, that it, it doesn't register to them. It whatever you you talking about millions of dollars for a fine, man, that's that's an infraction worth paying for them. That's an infraction worth paying. They have no problem with that at all. None whatsoever. You can get along with that just fine. That's not going to hurt them at all. Let me get caller from area code 929. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Me and Jason, this is Daryl from Chicago. All right, Daryl from Chicago. What's on your mind? Jason, as always, excellent broadcast. Uh, you hit a tremendous, tremendous uh, points tonight. I was uh, looking at the 
situation there with every time that we 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 look at something as far as financials concerned or we get together they give you so much scrutiny as black people and you're absolutely correct and one of the other areas that i have not seen nobody get indicted yet is taking professional athletes money i haven't seen that and it's been a sad thing there's a lot of athletes have gone broke with situations financial people that have around them but they get away they walk away they're normally jewish people white and anytime a brother does it they put him in jail but i've never seen that happen never seen that happen yeah, I mean, it's it's rare I mean, when that occurs. It's rare. Hell, they they letting them go ahead and be dead. You know, like Stevie Wonder and that's right. Was that Steve Harvey's former accountant or whatever? It's, yes, they get to be dead. And it's like, oh, your money just gone, and you still got to pay us. Don't you understand? That's 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 tra- that is liquidating wealth twice. Steve Harvey's case, he that's paid right. the tax. He already paid them taxes once. His accountant didn't do it. They didn't wait until he got ten years down the road and told you owe twenty two million dollars in taxes. Accountant's That's dead. Right. He didn't lift it up and enjoyed it. And Steve was well so bad. You still got to pay that. Now imagine if his career <laughs> had taken a nosedive after that man died. Imagine wow. if that had occurred, and he he just simply fantastic. wouldn't have had the ability to recover. And it'd have been like, oh well, That's, that's right. okay. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from area code nine zero eight. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Name is Omar from uh, Trenton, New Jersey. All right, Omar from Trenton. What's on your mind? Uh, Jason, uh, I, I do believe that <laughs> that 97% of these companies are engaged in you know, some type of fraud or criminal behavior. Oh, yeah. 97%, especially if they're a, a new IPO. Remember um, Nicola, the company that was supposed to bring Tesla hydrogen trucks? This will bring hydrogen trucks. Hydrogen trucks. Yeah. That's what they're going to do. Yeah. Remember that? They caught him red-handed. Then you had WeWork. Remember them? Well, you still you still have it. He's still working his little scam there, but yeah, you still have it. Yeah, he's still scamming. He didn't get him yet. Also, I remember watching Dirty Money on Netflix, and they had a segment about HSBC. That was crazy, Jason. They were caught red-handed, money laundering yeah. for the cartels. For decades, for decades, they were the cartels, Money laundering. and they, they were just one. A, they gave them a special plea deal. They were just one. We talk about HSBC, but they're actually just one. All your American banks, the big ones, they have overseas subsidiaries and whatnot. So they, you couldn't become a Pablo Escobar if Chase and these major banks were not helping you. You, you couldn't do it. It's too many hurdles to get through to get your money in and out the U.S. It's too much you have to go through to it. So yeah, they, these entities have always been helping that, always. <laughs> Now, I'm going to go a little it, bit it, further it, with it. I'm going to go a little bit further with it here in a minute, but I'll let you have the last word. It's, to me, um, like, it's gotten to the point where it's very perverse. Because now it's a situation where things like, I don't know, uh, 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 Bank of America, uh, things that are so big that if they did fail, the government kind of has to bail them out. Because they'll drag the economy down with them. And when you think about the fact that most likely they're doing something fraudulent, it's a scary situation. It truly is. You know? And <laughs> we got to look at the situation like even if you have an FDIC and you put your money in a bank, is it truly safe? Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's yes. safe depending you on who you man? are. You know, like, for example, if you're Silicon Valley Bank and you were bankrolling all these fra- all of these uh, risky startups and it didn't pay off for you, well, don't worry. We'll have a taxpayer come bail you out. Now, if you and me don't make it, oh, you get to go down in flames. But for the right folk here, oh, oh, don't worry. We'll make sure that your wealth is protected. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me go ahead and tell you, about, you all about Illegal. Let me explain to you all about Illegal. Let me explain to you exactly how this works about protecting the wealth. Now, for you young folks out there, for those of you in your 20s or your 30s, I got to give you some background because you don't understand. For those of us who are a little bit older, we grew up with this. 
by the time you get to the quarter point or halfway point of the 20th century, radio and television are in full swing for advertising. That is where all the money is. Big money in advertising. And there are two entities that pay the most for advertising. Beer and cigarettes. They would pay hundreds of millions in advertising. King of the yard. Well, then the Surgeon General of the United States is putting out these warnings and saying, you know, these substances are really not very healthy, especially this cigarette stuff. Wow, this is like toxic soup in the smoke. Um, then they start putting health warnings on it. Now, you can go look at a book. There's a book you all can go read called Merchants of Death. Pretty comprehensive book in that regard. You can go look at that one. But there, there are others, as a matter of fact. I can't just talk about Merchants of Death anymore. There are actually others out there that talk about how R.J. Reynolds and all the cigarette companies, which were mainstays of the American economy for decades and decades, the cigarette companies making money hand over fist by lying about how dangerous cigarettes were. Lying. Lying with congressional testimonies. All right. After decades of these dangerous products killing people left and right, Finally, it was time for the day of reckoning. We get to the 90s, and finally, after all these decades, you have the attorneys generals of all these states get together and say that they're suing the tobacco companies because of the cost on the healthcare system of their products. Well, by this time, they had started divesting themselves into other businesses that were less vulnerable to litigation in that regard, but they didn't want to give up the cigarettes either because folks got to have these smokes. They got sued. Now, here's the thing. The cigarette companies had armies of lawyers. I mean, they had dozens and dozens and dozens of lawyers. And when they finally did get sued, and the attorneys generals, uh, uh, together with a bunch of other law firms, private law firms, it literally took hundreds of lawyers at the state level and in the private sector, in the public sector and the private sector, to get together to sue these juggernaut companies. When a company is so large that the government doesn't have enough lawyers to go after them, you know you got a problem. Well, the government sues them and starts saying that they want their documents. For those of us who were there, do you remember when they sent them dozens and dozens of U-Haul trucks full of documents. Remember that? Remember when it was time for the cigarette companies to turn over their documents and they sent dozens and dozens of U-Haul moving trucks and said, there are documents. There they are. It was insane to look at it. You're talking about millions of pages in documents. It was insane to see. And the only reason that that got sorted out was because that's what all the lawyers for the state and the private sector expected them to do. And they said, that's okay. We have, you'll need a battalion of lawyers to filter through these documents. And they said, that's okay. We have a battalion of lawyers to do it. We have a battalion of lawyers who will go through these millions of documents. And ultimately, they found enough to make their case. Well, here's the problem. That type of chicanery is not isolated to Philip Morris and R.J. Reynolds and Budweiser. These are the exact same tactics that are used by companies like Comcast, companies like Amazon, Companies like AT&T. For those of you who've worked for AT&T, you know about Chestnut. Everybody talks about the old SBC Corporation stationed out of Texas. Or they talk about the old AT&T stationed out of Atlanta. But what nobody talks about is up there in Missouri. There is a building in Missouri that handles all of AT&T's financials. They handle all the financial information. 
human resources, taxes, everything else, it's up there in Missouri. And what I'm saying is that's all that that building does. It's not an office. That's all that that building does is handle the financials. That's it. And what I'm saying is if the IRS ever told AT&T, we want to audit you, don't you know the AT&T would be like, okay, give us a week. And then the next thing you know, they would send 20 or 30 U-Hauls full of papers to the IRS and say, here you go. There, there they are. That's what they would do. We know that's what they would do because that's the only reason that you would have an entire building set up to do that. That's the only reason you would do that. They're ready. If the IRS ever attempts to audit them, that's what they will do. So that's why AT&T, Comcast, Amazon, Tesla, and anybody else can tell you, oh, we, we don't owe you anything in taxes. We don't owe you anything. And if the IRS ever attempts to dispute it, AT&T's got lawyers, so they're not scared of an audit. And if you ever told them, okay, we're auditing you, turn over your documents, they will just send them this avalanche of paper and tell you, here you go. Now you sort, we have complied with your request. Here are all of our documents. Now you prove that we don't owe you. You prove that we actually owe you something. That's what their argument would be. We've gone over our paperwork. We don't owe you anything. You have to prove that we owe you something now. And I'm, I'm just telling y'all, it ain't the Disney Corporation, you name it. This, these are the rules these folks playing by. You can't do that. And you know damn well if AT&T was in t and the IRS would have been told them, wait a minute, nigga, go find, you better get all this here itemized on one little sheet of paper. Don't bring us all these forms. You're going to do different than this. You know damn well we couldn't get away with that. We could never get away with something like that. And they allow them to do it. Oh, yeah, and one more thing. It's taxpayer subsidized up one side and down the damn other this is why AT&T, despite all of the ridiculous foibles from Ed Whitaker all the way through Randall Stevenson, who was a damn disaster, no wonder that company can't go bankrupt. They get direct subsidies to the tune of billions of dollars from the U.S. government. AT&T doesn't have to pay for its fiber optic build out. The government, you and me, subsidize it so they can screw us over on our bills. So we finance building out their networks. We finance them making a profit. They keep the profits and stick us with the bill. And then tell you and me about pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And ain't nobody bringing you and me a hundred million damn dollars of subsidy. Nobody is bringing you and me a hundred million damn dollars of subsidy. How the hell can your company fail when you getting spotted two or three hundred million dollars a year? How can you fail? It's impossible for you to fail when you just getting a free chip off every year. It's, it's financially impossible. Elon Musk acting like we were on the verge of bankruptcy at Tesla. How the hell could that be? You telling that story now because you're trying to repaint yourself as the hero. If it was ever in doubt, you would have cut the damn cord long time ago. Caller Miracle 703, you're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Yeah, my name is Yusuf calling from uh, Arlington, Virginia. Yusuf from Arlington? What's on your um, mind? Yeah, um, 
I was uh you was making me reminisce about the the late ninety the late eighties, early nineties, and uh this brother um his name was Joseph Jett. He was uh, uh a trader, um and um he went to all the big elite schools like Harvard Business School, MIT and all of that. And he got a job at that time working for um what is that, Kidder Peabody, which was a, a, a trading, uh, a former securities uh, trader at that time. And um, he was a, a very uh, upstanding uh, brother, and um, they put everything on him and tried to give him time and, and, and said he was in, involved in the fraud, had nothing to do with it. He was just working for him. And he wrote a book at the time. I had it at the time. I don't know if I still have it. He had a book out called Black and White on Wall Street. And he was one of the few brothers who actually went that high. This man had millions of dollars. The equivalent today would be billions of dollars. He was very wealthy. They closed his bank account. Uh, they set him up in the office, uh, put everything on him. He took the fall for all the white boys. And he wrote a book about all of this, the insider trading, the financial uh, system at, at, at Wall Street. He did a whole, um, a whole um, expose on the inside of, of Wall Street. And today he has his own company. Uh, I think he deals, I think it's called uh, Jet Capital Management, LLC. I think it's an LLC. But uh, it just brought back memories about that because he had warned uh, the blacks that was uh, dealing at that time working and had jobs and stuff like that in that uh, particular field, what was going on. And he kind of ringed the alarm bells on it back in the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Well, His having a warning Joseph about that Jack. is important. Having a warning about that is important because yeah. you see these things get recycled. That's why it's important that we talk about that. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a caller from area code 504. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, this is James calling from Marshalltown, Iowa, by way of New Orleans. All right, James, what's on your mind? Uh, you want to talk about a rigged game, Jason. I'm from New Orleans, but I've been living in Iowa for 14 years. I called your program a couple years ago and told you about the Haitian migrant crisis right before it happened. But you want to talk about a rigged game. You know, Ice Cube offered Caitlin Clark $5 million to come to the big three. These white folks are urging her against that because it's black-owned, because he sees the financial benefit of bringing her there. So we are definitely in a rigged game. He's trying to do what the white owners do. And they say, no, nah, Negro, you can't do what we do. I mean, look, we definitely have the in – it's not like it's some, you know, super secret genius ingenuity involved. We, we got better ideas. We're better negotiators. Sure. The only difference is they keep you radically underfunded compared to them. I mean, you're not a little underfunded. You are orders of magnitude and dimensions of existence underfunded. So it's like you can bring a few million dollars and they can bring a hundred million, two hundred million dollars to the same sloppy player, by the way. So, yeah, it's not about having the right idea. They've just made sure that you're economically uncompetitive in that regard. Because that's the thing right there is that if he offers, you know, $3 million, $5 million, and they offer 10 and if he can come back and offer 20 okay, now we got something different going on. Now we got something different going on. But the other thing is they can also tell her, okay, look here now, that, that, that's not the best move for your career going forward here, so we think you need to uh, think about what will happen afterward. So they can make implicit and explicit threats that we can't. They can be like, okay, if you go to big three, you better hope it's a big win because you're going to make a big loss. If you, if you if, Don't think you're going to come back over here. If you, if, it's, if you strike out at the big three, your next stop is OnlyFans. We don't have the ability. I mean, yeah. they, they got the ability to say that. We don't have the ability to say that. So I think it's a great idea. It's always been a great idea, and that is why keeping us chronically underfunded, outrageously so, Elon Musk can get $187 billion, and you and me got to damn near rob a bank to make $187,000. That's not accidental. That's rigged. I'll let you have the last word. 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's just like with the trucking companies and everything. I'm on my way to Oklahoma City right now, but with the trucking companies, it's the same thing. As small as people think it is, out there in California, the East Indians then basically locked up that produce. You got to go through them to haul produce out of California just about now. The Amish, I mean, they've rigged the game for everybody and for us. Oh, man, you got to fight to get a penny out here. That's uh, I land my plane there. Thank you for taking my call. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. I mean, yeah, we can go industry by industry. Now, I'm just focusing on the richest dudes out there and whatnot, but that's what I was saying when it comes to cryptocurrency. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about the Sam Bankman freeze, but the truth of the matter is there's thousands of people way smaller than him. They pulled their little rug pulls and nobody's come seeing them. So industries that are technically a lot smaller than these richest people in the world industries, and yet they get to do the same thing. Now, you let you and me try it. You let me, you and me try it. We can't do that. We can't violate securities laws. We can't violate finance laws. We can't violate political contribution laws. We can't violate local zoning laws. We can't violate tax laws. We can't violate uh, zoning regulations. We can't violate environmental regulations. We can't, in hell, we can't even have a restaurant that smells like food. Now think about that for a damn minute. Oh, at the turkey leg hut. Oh, the smell. What does it smell like? It smells like food, damn it. Yes, they have a restaurant. Imagine telling all of us have driven by McDonald's, Burger King, Five Guys. It don't matter where the hell you, Popeyes, you can smell the damn place. You damn right. It's an industrial kitchen. Well, we want to shut that down because it smells. What does it smell like? It smells like, it smells like cooked turkeys. Well, yes, they cook turkeys there. Yes, we don't like that. It smells like food. We don't like that. Take their license from them. And then you go take a look at the emails from the folks who are going at them and find out, oh, it wasn't about that at all. And too many niggas making money. Too many niggas making money, and now let's see if we can go ahead and shut that down. White folk don't get that. White folk don't get the too many white folk making money rule. No white, Elon Musk ain't never been up against the, hey, you doing too much. You're a white man making too much money. You get to violate every damn rule there is. When you black, hey, hold on, man, you making too much. You making too damn much over there. What you doing? I mean, I'll be damned. They telling you you can't cook a damn turkey. Next up, you can't make a peanut butter sandwich. And it would be funny if it wasn't real. That's the problem. It would be funny if it wasn't real. Okay, in the chat room, Drewski, talking about the traffic and noise complaints. Here's the issue I got with that. Every single damn intersection in America with a Walmart got a traffic and noise issue. Auntie, chill. If they've built a Walmart, if they've built a Target, that intersection is blocked off all damn day. You're talking about traffic and noise. Every city that builds a Walmart has to redo the damn intersection to take on all the excess traffic. And ain't nobody ever sat up here and threatened them or any damn thing else. They roll out the damn red carpet and they tell all the white folks in the neighborhood, hey. Deal with it, nigga. When they start yelling about the damn noise. The city council ignores them. The county commission ignores them. The parish commission ignores them. They tell Walmart, bring in that damn economic development. We'll take care of these yahoos back here squilling. They go straight gangster on them. Let me tell you something about noise. Walmart could be landing airplanes at their stores. And they would tell them folks, that's your ass. (laughs) 
Want to talk about noise at the Turkey Leg Hut, noise at Killer Mike's place, and noise at T.I.'s place, and noise at Nipsey Hussle's place. And if you're white, you can be landing damn me airplanes at your place all hours of the damn. Let me tell y'all something. Okay, here's the problem that folks tend to have. You all think about your major airports. If you're in Dallas, you think about DFW. If you're in Houston, you think about George Bush. If you're in L.A., you think about LAX. You know, if you're in Chicago, you think about O'Hare. All right, but all these places, they always have some smaller satellite uh, airport there. In Dallas, it's uh, Love Field. In Houston, I forget the name of the other one. LAX is Ontario. Uh, Chicago, it's Midway. You get the idea. So everywhere you go, you got the major airport, and you got another one that does a lot of the flights and stuff. Man, they don't give a damn what you think about that. Y'all, Chicago, stand up. The first time that I went to Chicago, when I saw the damn airplane flying straight over that Circle K, I mean, the landing gears were down. I thought the plane was going to crash on all of us. Y'all, the plane was so close, I could count the rivets on the underbelly. Chicago, Midway. Flying right over Circle K and whatever that street is right there where Circle K is, is on the side of Midway Airport. My folks in Chicago, you know where it is. Okay, is it Chicago, is it Circle K or 7-Eleven? I forgot, that's the north. So I might be messing y'all up. If if it's not Circle K, it's 7-Eleven. I'm not certain if Chicago is a 7-Eleven city or a Circle K one. Whichever one Chicago is, that's the one. That damn plane was so damn close. I mean, you could, that thing was so close, you damn near felt like you could jump up and snack the bottom of it. It was undamn real. Ain't nobody saying a damn thing to them about noise. They ain't saying a damn thing to them about noise. And I'm like, whoa, this should be illegal to come this damn. If the pilot is drowsy one evening, it's going to be a mass casualty event. Damn sleeping. It's going to be a mass casualty event if that nigga gets drowsy. Talking about noise. So let me get this straight. He can build a hangar, and y'all okay with that? We got 20 cars out here. Up, shut the city down. Can't have none of this. Those airplanes, they're not just shaking windows. They're shaking the fillings in your damn teeth. But they can build another hangar. They can build another gate. Oh, you got 20 cars out here. It's the end of humanity if we don't do something about this. And I'm talking about, and it don't take thousands of people there either. Do you realize, like, for you and me to get something done, we got to bring hundreds of black folk, and we got to bring out the ministers and a couple of celebrities got to come out and do a damn dance. And and that's what we got to do. White folk, if you get two little old white ladies show up talking about, they make a lot of noise at night. The city council, okay, send the sheriff out there. Don't know if we can handle this. The airplanes got the city's damn doormats rolling up. Can't nobody stop it. You and me got 20 cars outside and two little old white women can shut us down. Two little old white ladies can come and say, hey, that's a wrap. Come get them. That's it. Not thousands of people. Just the two of them come rickety, bring their asses in. Here's the crazy part about it. They'll be complaining. Y'all, here's the insulting part about it. It'll be two little old white ladies with hearing aids talking about it's too noisy outside. What? It'll be two little old white ladies at the damn city council meeting. Got to get everybody to repeat every damn word they saying because they can't understand it. But they'll be telling you it's too noisy. What you doing is too noisy. She doesn't have a miracle ear. She has a phenomenal ear. When they start making them damn a musical ear, she got a magical ear, but telling you y'all making too much noise and the city council sitting there looking at her like this makes some damn sense.
that's all it takes to shut us down. We can show the babies falling out of the airplanes. Hell, Boeing just had a, a Southwest flight to Denver today just had the cowl on the engine blow off of it. Boeing has killed hundreds of people in the last five years. Business rolls on. If Boeing was blacking, man, we'd be, we, we be talking about them the way you talk about the Negro Leagues in baseball. If black people owned Boeing, we'd be talking about Boeing today the way we talk about the Negro Leagues. Past tense. They'd have told us we got to ground every airplane for the next decade. That's what they would have told us. And then you would have had a bunch of Coleman Cruz Negroes online. That's the problem right there. You know, they're just not ready for business. They're just not trying hard enough. They're not trying hard enough right there. That's the issue right there. We, you know, and they're just not trying hard enough. It's about class. Caller Miracle 708, you're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Brother Jason, this is uh, LB calling from Chicago, brother. LB from Chicago, what's on your mind? Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you, man. I, I cannot imagine all of the work uh, necessary to prep for each one of these shows, man. I, I listened to last night's show. In and I, um, excellent, I'm sorry, excellent broadcast last night, brother, um, on, on that uh, on the guy. Was it Coleman? Uh, I can't think of his last name right now. But even, even tonight's uh, uh, broadcast, I'm listening, and I just wanted to chime in. Um, you know, as you mentioned, Midway Airport and O'Hare Airport as well. Um, this goes back maybe about, about 15, 20 years ago when Jesse Jackson Jr. was still relevant in politics. And this is such an interesting story, I think. There was a proposal that was on the table presented by he and, uh, and his father, Jesse Sr., to build an airport in south suburban of Chicago, south suburban Piatone. And for those who, who don't know, uh, the south suburbs of Chicago over the last 25, 30 years has become a predominantly, not all, but predominantly uh, black working class, some educated uh, professional black folks as well. And it's, it's experienced that change, like I said, over the last 25 to 30 years or so. Right. And, so, then, and now, now let me let me make a brief keep, keep hold your thought there, because I want to articulate this for people what you're saying, because when you I'm, say the south suburbs, a lot of folks think south side. Well, they are correct to a certain mm -hmm. extent, but you're talking about they keep going. I think it's you keep going towards Riverside. I think and going over that yes, bridge. Sir. So you tell me, you tell me, you keep going yes, down sir. until you get to Riverside and then you go over that bridge. And what he's talking about, there's some nice modern new constructed uh, suburbs that got built out there and whatnot. And he is correct. I've been to them. I filmed them when I was doing gentrified. I didn't get to include them in my film, but yes, I've been out there. Toward, uh, I've been out there the Riverside. I went over the bridge. I went all the way. And I, I got bored. Turn back around. But that that those neighborhoods out there. Yes, I've been to them. These are not old construction. They're not crowded together. He's right. It looks like any white suburb you could be in, except it's it's pretty much all black. Uh, go ahead. It's pretty much all black, brother. It's pretty much all black. So in the mix of those suburbs, are are you know there's some less affluent towns like like Dalton. Some people might be familiar because Dalton has been in the news recently because of the, 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 the black uh, uh, female uh, mayor of Dalton who's just been doing all kinds of asinine things with, you know, uh, um, with township funds and that kind of thing. But also in the mix of, of this collection of towns are, are very, really almost affluent black areas, predominantly black. So anyway, so the point I'm making is, is that Jesse Jackson Jr., you know, 20 years ago, put a proposal on the table to instead of expanding O'Hare Airport, which is eventually what ended up happening, instead of expanding O'Hare Airport to put a, a modern, um, you know, decently sized airport in the south suburbs of uh, a south suburban town known as Piatone, uh, to deal with some of the overflow that was, you know, that O'Hare couldn't handle and that Midway couldn't handle. And it was just interesting to see how worked up white folks got here, man. They absolutely were not going to allow black people to control that kind of money and, and sort of business travel as it's coming into the city of Chicago and then making its way 
you know, uh, business folks making their way from the south suburbs down into sort of, uh, you know, Chicago Central, downtown Chicago. Um, and it's just how they control, like you said, you know, the, the, the funding, the economics of, of, of what we try to develop and how they sort of undercut and sabotage us. So I just wanted to chime in with that. And, again, thank you so much for what you do, brother. You have replaced for many of us, I know, um, the kinds of shows, Sunday morning talk shows that we used to wait on, we used to listen to this week, you know, Sam Donaldson, Koki Robertson, that kind of thing. You are them now, brother. Thank you. Be one. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. In the chat room, there was folks saying Riverdale. I've never been to uh, I never been to Dalton or Calumet. I've never been there. Um, you all know me. There's two areas that are difficult for me. Chicago, when I when I can get up there, it's cool. It's been a couple of years since I've been to Chicago. Going to try to make my way back up there. Uh, California, it's just out of the way, so it it tends to be a hassle to get to some of those places and stuff. So usually if I don't have business to get there, it's just kind of a, a hassle getting to the upper Midwest, you know, Minnesota, places like that. It's, it's a bit of a hassle. So it's been a while since I've been there. I don't get to really travel around as much as I can. But as you all see, I try to remember as much as I can. I try to see as much as I can. I try to know, okay, it ain't all just, quote, the south side and all that. And Halstead Street, I drove the whole damn thing from uh, downtown all the way out. So I'm not one of these people who just talked about it and looked at it and then ran out or whatever. I try to study these places, go out on the ground, learn something, you know, so I can see my people's condition. So, yeah, if all you ever hear about is, quote, the south side, you wouldn't know that there's a whole damn affluent suburb out there. A couple of them. Now that you ain't heard on the news. And I'm not telling you what somebody else told me. I'm telling you what I've seen. So at some point, if they ever get that chick up out of the... Maybe I'll go by and take a look at what's going on, but um, definitely is, 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 worth, uh, is worth noting. Now, about the airport, the reason why you don't want to let folk build an airport there is because now you get in line for federal funds. Now you get in line for federal money. So if y'all sit up here and build a sufficiently sized airport, that's what I was trying to say here before. You got airports all over the Dallas Metroplex, but if your airport is a sufficient size or does a sufficient amount of business, you actually get federal money for that. You actually get federal money for that. And if they're under the jurisdiction of that township or that city or whatever, like I said, it's, oh, that goes to them. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of reasons why they would want to prevent you from taking the transportation hub and distributing it somewhere where they don't have control of it. They want to make sure that you don't have the ability to, when you talk about the transportation hub, they want to make sure they control all of that. So they don't want you putting one off where they can't control it. It's like, wait a minute. Oh, you busting up the racket. But we ain't never going to have that. Call America 512. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Hey, this is uh, Eric from Austin, Texas. All right, Eric from Austin. What's on your mind? Hey, I just want to tell you and that previous guy who made the comment in like south of Waco, Texas, right? You have what you call SpaceX, which is owned by Elon Musk, right? So all through the day, sometimes it can be two, three times a day. It sounds like it shakes the whole entire city. Hell it yeah. sounds like an earthquake with those spaceships going up. And I used to talk to a little chick down there. We're sitting on the porch. And I got frightened because it sounded like an earthquake. And I got up all frantic, like, hey, hey, what's going on? She's like, oh, chill, that's just SpaceX. Yeah, because like, because what? out there, I don't think they I don't I don't think they do the rock I don't know if they do the rockets take I know they do rockets taking off in Florida, but I want to say out there in Waco is where they do the testing. And if they're doing yes, the, the but if they're doing the rocket, the yeah, okay. But this is my point, though. The reason for that is because right now the Falcon Heavy that they're building and whatnot, this thing's got like, oh boy, sixteen, seventeen rockets. They go, they've been taking the Merlin rockets, and basically you've got the equivalent of sixteen or twenty rocket engines built into a single housing. So however loud one used to be, in order to have their SpaceX Starship, they just basically have 
quintupled and doubled the number of rockets. Oh, you all can go take a look at it online. It is just this crazy thing to see. And that's why I, I put the image that I did on tonight's program there for that, because it's just a crazy thing to see the rockets on that thing. And yeah, I mean, if you are around anywhere where that's going on, that, yeah, it's going to shake everything, including just for them testing it. Not anything ever getting off the ground, just just to test that thing that they're doing. And they telling y'all, y'all, well, suck it up, deal with it. And, oh, yeah, by the way, mm. state, local, and federal subsidies all going to pay for your discomfort. Now, if you and three niggas mm. bring a car, <laughs> if you and three niggas got right. the bass up too loud, oh, the humanity, we must stop this. Mm. We got to stop this. But other than that, oh, no, 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 no. For them, sure. What, what, what's the problem here? And all they can do, they just sitting around looking, man, they ain't listening to none of us. They're not listening to a damn thing we got to say. None of us. Matter of fact, let me go well, ahead I, I, and um, I, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to keep you on the line here because I'm, I want to do this while I've got you on here because I want everybody to take a look at it and to see exactly what it looks like. I've got one here from popular, well, not popular mechanics, but uh, space flight. Now I want y'all to see what this thing looks like and hell yeah. It's shaking y'all's damn teeth down there. I want y'all to take a look at what you see on your screen right now. For those of you who hear me here, you might have to wait a minute to take a look at what you hear on your screen right now. Take a look at what you see on your screen. The, that's the, that's one example one example of the rockets for Falcon Heavy. One, do you see how many boosters that, how many booster ports that thing has on it? And that that's not even the biggest one. They've got another one that they just tested that's got more of them on it than this does. Now imagine the sound of one one yeah. rocket engine and this thing is coming at your ass with 10 or 15 testing them is going to register on the Richter scale and it does from miles and miles oh. away and they're telling them up oh, too late to stop it now here we we rolling so you can move out of Waco but Elon doesn't have to go nowhere and oh yeah by the way hey nigga turn your music down now, ain't that a damn son of a gun right there? So Elon can shake the damn stratosphere, but you better turn your music down because you're disturbing some little old lady across the street. This is where we at. Hmm. I, just, I just wanted to, to put into context in case somebody doesn't know. Waco is about 200,000 people there. So you're not talking about a little bitty town where it's a little country town where you got one or two schools. It's a huge city. Apparently not big enough to get them to yell about it. I mean, they brought him there and yeah. it's just, yeah, you better turn your music down. You better than him. Let him make his money, yeah. disturb y'all, disturb the peace. The kids are growing up with damn me psychological issues. Because the noise has been going on so long. It's like, man, look here. We ain't trying to hear it. We're not trying to hear it. Yeah. I'll let you have the last word. Oh, yeah. I just, I just wanted to say thanks for your, your program, man. And, uh, you know, I always love hearing and getting the great information. So appreciate you taking my call. Thank you very much for giving us a call here tonight. Man, could y'all imagine that? Could you imagine getting pulled over in Waco, Texas? Can you imagine getting pulled over in Waco, Texas, and the damn rockets is going off and the cop is sitting up here with the lights flashing and coming up behind you? Can I see your license and registration? Can I see your license and registration? What? Your license and registration. Why did you pull me over? The music is too damn loud. What? Why did you pull me over? Because your music is too loud. What? Your music is too loud. What? I can't hear you. I can't hear you over Elon's rockets.
Could you imagine that traffic stop? The man's trying to give you a ticket. You can't even hear what the damn ticket. Your music is too loud. Bro, I, dude, is this is this a comedy skit? No, we're serious. Waco is a nice place to live. You're disturbing the peace. If I'm disturbing the peace, what the hell is Elon doing? So I'm disturbing the peace. What the hell is he doing? Folks, come on now. Don't let anybody sit up here and pull this damn trick bag with you about they earned it and worked hard and all this old garbage. No, they didn't. It was given to them. Then when you talk about it's got to be given to you, all of a sudden, oh, can't do that right there. You can do it for them for decades, centuries, but for you, can't work. But for you, it can't work. All right. Man, if you don't shut the hell up and cut my damn check, if you don't shut up and cut the check, that's all I want to hear about. We're going to go ahead and wrap things up here tonight. If you are new here to the Black Channel, welcome to the Haven of Intelligent Black Thought. We do this every weekend. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. Join us each and every time that we are here. If you haven't been to our website, blackchannelfilms.com, you want to go and check out our groundbreaking, best-selling documentary work, 7 a.m., Gentrified, Race War, all available on DVD and streaming. Go to blackchannelfilms.com. That is blackchannelfilms.com. Want to send a shout out here to Maurice and everyone else who has contributed to support tonight's nice program on PayPal, Super Chat, Venmo. Thank you all very much for your support. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in live or recorded. Thank you for liking, subscribing, and sharing. And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, The Black Authority. And until next time, my brothers and my sisters from around the world, remember, black is the future and the future is uncompromising. <laughs>